Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, prayer and testimonies. I haven't got any testimonies in a while from a brother or sister in Christ, so this was a blessing, and the reason I'm reading it is it's a great testimony how God saved this man and changed life. Okay. When you go through the true gospel of repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confessing both in prayer and asking God to save you, there's going to be a changed life. Okay. So I'll probably put it down at the bottom. I have a ministry email and a ministry P.O. box. Okay. So it's always great to get these letters in the mail. I love reading them, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, on the deck. So let's get into this. I'm going to try reading this, and my throat's still a little sore, I'm trying to get over some of the, the sickness that I've been sick lately. So, dear, I'm going to leave the guy's name out, just respect. Dear Brother Philip Newton, it is very early in the morning here. I've stayed up way too long. I've been there, <laughs> Brother in Christ, I've been there. Whether I get excited and I lose track of time, or you just get those nights where it's hard to go to sleep right away. The Lord has brought me out of many things, however, I'm still smoking cigarettes. You had said in the past for us to take it to the Lord before we ask you, the brethren, for prayer. I'm asking you for prayer. I'm very tired. I've always said this, brothers and sisters in Christ, when it comes to prayer requests, you ask me to pray for you, I will pray for you. But my encouragement has always been, and I will always ask first, and he knows this, he's been following the ministry, is that, have you taken it to the Lord yourself first? Okay, that's what I always say. Um, and the prayer request from this brother in Christ is that he's struggling with cig cigarettes. And as we keep reading, God has cleaned up his life and helped God get a lot of things out of his life. Okay, this is one thing he's struggling with. Okay. Where did I leave off? Right there. I have the Christmas series intro the Lord had led you to do for the series on Christmas to a loved one. I think he's saying he gave it to a loved one. I'd given the title to this series. I pray there... Please forgive me. I'm trying to read. I pray there what... I pray they're watching them, there it is, they've watched them, and the Lord convicts them. I'm talking about the Christmas series. Those who refuse the word of God concerning this matter create division. We are to be of one mind. That's one thing I've always preached, brothers and sisters in Christ. The deception is when you say there's things that we can agree to disagree on. You won't find that in scripture whatsoever. Okay, time and time again, it says we're to be of one mind. So, even as a lost man being left to myself, I would have not celebrated it. My mom, whom I doubt is saved, gets this, gets this truth and has for years. God has been very good to me. Blessings to you. Praise the Lord. And God's been very good to me too. February 17th, it's just the next day. Sometimes when I write a letter, I'll write one over a period of days. Reminds me of my grand, grandparents in Oklahoma City. They do the exact same thing. They'd write a note and leave a date, write the next part and leave a date. And there'd be several dates by the time I got a letter from them. To tell you a little bit, I was born in a home, in a house, Mom's parents, my grandparents, later brought on a cold, snowy winter afternoon on January 4th in 1968. So I turned 52 years old this year. My parents had two children. Before me, both died before I came. The first, a girl... Crib death took her at eight months. The second they planned, he came early and died within seven hours. This is his parents. Okay. After 
after me came twins. One was killed, accidental death, at my uncle's hand. The other adopted out. My sisters came in September of 1971. In 1973, my dad left us here in Missouri and went to Casper, Wyoming, where his parents lived and had a home. Often nowadays, brother who wrote this and other brothers and sisters Christ, I realize that a lot of people, there's more broken homes than anything. I was raised by a single parent. Okay? There's just a lot of broken homes. While working on an oil rig in December of 1973, he suffered a head injury. On January 17th of 1974, he died in a hospital in Wyoming, having never fully come to. Re report was, had he lived, he'd have been a vegetable. We couldn't get to Wyoming, so when he left in 1973, we never saw him again. My mom was a single widow until 1977 when she married my first stepdad. After my dad was dead and gone, I was primarily raised by women. When there's no one there but mom, you can become a mama's boy. Okay. Events took place in my childhood that would later turn me to sodomy. At about 19, I had a serious girlfriend. Of course, we committed fornication, which produced a son in June of 1989. We separated then, got back together, and married in December of 1991. I believe it was the latter, latter part of 1999 that I left her. She divorced me in 2000 or 2001. After that, I turned to booze and sodomy. Sodomy came into his life. He turned to booze. Okay. On January 8, 2011, I was riding home from Camerson, Missouri with a roommate. He was driving. Oops. I was blacked out drunk. He never drank. According to the highway report, he tried to miss a deer which had ran out into the road. The car flipped from front to top to bottom a couple of times. It rolled over. By the time help got there, the car was on its passenger side with the top up against a telephone pole and tree. It had cracked the telephone pole and broken the tree. The report said that when they found us, I was in the passenger side of the car in a semi-fatal position and Jim, the driver, was on top of me. He never wore his seatbelt, so he would have ended up on top of me. The passenger side was on the ground with the top smashed against a telephone pole and a tree. Very serious accident. The report said that I was combodulated as they were trying to get me out. I don't know how long it took them to remove us from the car. Among multiple injuries, including a crushed pelvis and many fractures in my right area. Let's see, it's hard to read that word. The main artery was ripped. My brain was bleeding. I should have bled out and died before help came. It's a man who's lost. This is his lost life. <coughs> Give me a second. Forgive me. Someone was praying those whatever it takes prayers, but then I was a sodomite on multiple medications and a terrible drunkard 
on a steady diet of whiskey and vodka, along with prescription meds. It was nothing for me to drink 24 beers on my own in a day and want more. That's the thing. I've come across brothers and sisters in Christ and this brother. I've come across people who don't think they're, they have a problem because your body builds up a tolerance and you can drink a lot more. One person might drink a few and get drunk. Another person has to drink a lot more and get drunk. In 2004, I had taken out driving See. 2004, I'm trying to read it, please forgive me. I had taken out driving, drinking, blackout, drunk. Okay. I got caught. I spent 30 days in a county jail. I lost a license for 10 years. When I returned to my apartment, the gallon bottle of vodka I'd begun that day was completely empty. I had been alone that day. In early 2014, in the pew of a Pentecostal church, I bowed my head and gave myself to the Lord. That was what I knew to do. The Lord had been working on me beforehand in my home. I don't know what the sermon was about. I wasn't I was at the end of myself. I knew enough to know that if there was any hope, it was Jesus because I couldn't. So he went there seeking Jesus. He doesn't remember what the sermon was about. He went there seeking Jesus. Before that year was out, the Lord brought me out of sodomy. This is after salvation. I was cleansed of alcohol, medication, movies, secular movies, the big thing. I left that Pentecostal church and moved to a Baptist two blocks from my home, from there to a Southern Baptist, from there to a Baptist. Long about that time, I was watching videos from Brother Brian Denlier on church buildings and left the Baptist building I was in. Now, a lot of people, I want to stop there for a second, brother. A lot of people they're searching for truth and you'll notice they'll bounce around a lot of people like to shop i want to find the best church that believes as i do and i've, I've talked about this they'll shop like you shop for the best bible for you that okay with your sin the best group that you fit in but there's some people that they'll go from building to building to building because they're not getting fed they're searching for truth and they're not finding it god brought this brother to truth Praise the Lord, he brought you to Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries channel. I couldn't do it anymore. After that, I was invited back to the first Baptist I'd attended before. I went two more times, spaced apart, and just couldn't. That was the end of church buildings, Baba buildings, for me. I want no more. The temptation for booze and pills, medications, are not there anymore. Praise the Lord. The television can catch my attention, but not for good reasons. I want no part of it. I avoid it as much as possible, which is, I, which is seldom that I have to be around it. I don't have cable. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. But now with the internet, you can still get in a lot of trouble and get suckered into watching something. Television, movies, TV shows. There are still two things I wrestle mainly with. One being cigarettes. I often wonder how I could still be hanging on if I'm saved. Lost people quit smoking. Is it possible or is it a sign I'm not saved at all? Question mark. We'll get back to that. Okay. It is apparent my many changes have come in my come in me because of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Right? Yes, I believe you are saved, brother. And there's a lot of change in your life. God is working on you. Now I can't remember the date, but you haven't been saved for 50 years. Some people have. 
Uh, I've been saved four years now, and God is still working on me. And there's people that'll tell you, God saved me. I've been saved for 30 years, 40 years, and God is still working on them. Okay? There's still things God is cleaning up their life with that they're finding in their life. Right. A joy when the Lord teaches me. It is a joy when the Lord teaches me from His Word or through the brethren. I want to write to you. I should get this in the mail tomorrow. My penmanship isn't the best. I pray you'll be able to read it. Okay, blessings to you, your brother in Christ. Okay. Here's the thing, brother. Your handwriting is a lot better than mine. <laughs> your handwriting is way better than mine. I mean, just want to throw that out there. When it comes to the cigarettes, brother, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay. All things. And what I realize in my life, when I struggle with certain things, I put Jesus to the side and I put this to the side sometimes. And I fall back into sin. If you're struggling with cigarettes, you're quitting it, falling back into it. Quitting it, falling back into it. That's the struggle we have today, okay, with this body of flesh, okay? Remember, with the mind, I might serve Christ, but with the body, the law of sin, okay? We still a part of this flesh. We're still going to be tempted, and we're still going to fall into temptation. I never use that as justification. When we fall into temptation and sin, we are wrong, okay? You don't turn around and say, uh, well, we're all sinners, and we're all going to sin. Uh, we shouldn't be sinning, okay? So, brother in Christ, um, if you're struggling with it, you're quitting it, you're falling back in to quit, your attitude towards sin is correct. Your love for the Lord is there. Okay? Uh, I'll pray for you. Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, pray for this brother when it comes to cigarettes. Um, try to read because I think he might have said two things. You might have forgot to mention the second thing. So, but cigarettes is the big thing he's he's working on in his life, his walk with the Lord. I'll pray with you, brother. Uh, stay in the Word, okay, and uh, get some good old-fashioned hymns to sing and memorize. Like I, I said, to help me with my temptation. I found good things, good addictions. Go for walks. Get some cue cards that I have. Um, I use these to write notes, and I also use them to, uh, they're like cards you can rip out, to write memory verses on. And just go for walks and uh, talk. Anytime you start getting the temptation to, to smoke a cigarette, say, hey, I'm going to go for a walk and talk with the Lord. I'm going to grab, um, like I said, cue cards. If you've got a little thing where you can listen to Alexander Scorby, you go for a walk and listen to, to, to the Bible being read. You know, get out. Okay, get out in nature. Get some good hobbies. Okay, Lord bless me. He let, let me get chickens. He let me get a garden going. So I've got two things now that are taking up my time along with the Lord bless me with being living near the beaches here in Oregon that I can go walk on the beaches. Um, so I wanted to read this testimony how this brother in Christ, okay, there was a change in his life. He started out in the Babel buildings. Uh, he came to the Lord. He was seeking the Lord. And there was a changed life. God got him out of the Babel buildings. God pointed him to this book right here. King James Bible. God's perfect written word. Okay. God changed his life. Got him out of sodomy. Got alcohol out. Got him off a lot of medications. that are not good for you. That really mess you up. So thank you brother in Christ for this. Okay, so once again, brothers and sisters of Christ, please pray for this brother when it comes to his cigarettes. I always pray for everybody when it comes to struggles with the flesh. Uh, once again, for me, if you didn't watch the previous video, um, I'm very sick. And uh, I mean, it put me out for three or four days. Um, I'm starting to feel a lot better. But I know that just because you're feeling better, you still got to take it easy before you start hitting the ground running. I'm behind on the garden. There's a lot of neighbors that are like, hey, I just planted this and I planted my onions. They're already getting green and everything. And I'm like, I haven't planted anything yet. So um, pray for the ministry. Uh,
that uh, God will continue to use this ministry and uh, just keep sending prayer requests. I got the email under this video. If you got some prayer requests, put down some prayer requests. Okay. So that's it for this quick video. Thank you, brother. Uh, I really, really, I want to keep pushing this and pushing this. I really enjoy when people write letters. So even though you think you don't have the best penmanship, this was a blessing. Okay. I don't mind reading emails, but that means coming in here. Remember, I, I can't remember if I said it here in the previous video. I took a break from the computer for four or five days. <coughs> just to get away from it and this is a blessing I can get away from it and still read you know even though the brother in Christ or sister in Christ isn't there it's almost like fellowship because I'm learning about you and you're talking either about the Lord about your life this is a testimony and I get to sit outside and stay away from all this electronic stuff this is always a blessing uh -huh. always a blessing so, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, brother, for that testimony, and thank you, brother and sister in Christ, for watching.